Welcome to the Dog Classroom. The Dog Classroom Podcast. I am your co-host, Anne-Marie. And I'm your co-host, Amelia. Like and subscribe on Spotify and YouTube in video format. And now into the episode. Here we go. Welcome back to the Dog Classroom Podcast. This week, we're going to be talking about back to school. Right. So I think whether you have kids, whether you have a teacher in the family, I honestly think everybody sort of gets back down to a little bit more routine come September. Yeah, because yeah. I think, you know, we're we're closing down camps and we're sort of getting back to our normal normal day to day that we weather go through. change. The weather does change. Possibly. Right. Yeah. So there's lots of things that go on at back to school time, even if you don't have kids in the home, right? But I think for now we'll talk about how it relates to dogs. Right. So Again, coming off of the summer, summer holidays, camping, hiking, that sort of thing, is I find um, if you do have kids, kids are out of school, Mm -hmm. uh, people are taking more holidays, so a lot more time is spent with the dog at home or with the dog going out to do something. Right. Then all of a sudden, September rolls around, and now, you know, everybody's back to nine to five, eight to five. Um, not going out so much, spending dog-wise, spending possibly more than likely a little bit more time um, at home on their own. Right. So in looking at it, and chances are over the last two to three months, I don't want to say there hasn't been as much structure, but it's important to me um, to revisit some of the little things. Right. So they can sort of get back into their routine. Right. And it's important that they do that slowly right Mm -hmm. that we're not just going to be like okay summer's over and Um, then i go back eight to five and the dog's like holy smoke yeah um so what are some of the ways that you start to do that in your house um usually it's i would say the last few weeks of summer i think everybody's adjusting a little bit more what i try to work up to is leaving uh making a point of leaving the dogs and and going out um for you know for a period of time a few hours at a time um revisiting you know possibly different times that they're going to be walked now rather than you know a lot of times we can we're slower in the mornings or something you know when we're on holidays so are they now going to have to go all day and wait for the walk in the evening Right. And the weather's changing too, like we talked about. So it's like, you know, maybe you're not having to walk quite so early anymore. You can actually go midday or later on, like you're saying. Right. Because of the heat is what you're referring to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, So changing up their routine that way. Also changing up what time they eat. Yes. Um, Because if you're going to feed them before you go to work and when you get back from work, there's that gap in between, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, For sure. So all the little things, I think, that get them back to their regular routine, you're saying you start them in the last few weeks of summer. Yeah. So rather than like, boom, after Labor Day weekend, you know, everybody's back in school. um, What I like to do is start doing that a bit of ahead of time. And I think family wise, it's helpful as well. Right. Um, with the kids to to be getting a little bit more on a on a schedule, you know, as far as um, getting up, like you said, meal time, throwing some training into play. Though I think over the years we can both say that, you know, the majority of what we teach we do with our dogs ourselves, and mm-hmm. now it's it's become habit, so it's just naturally done. Right. Right. But maybe you know, focus on a few different things like creating distance a little bit longer or um, adding more mental stimulation there. That's where I wanted to go. So, you know, especially if there's, they're not getting the mental stimulation in the summer of going out and doing different things. So maybe we need to up the ante a little bit. So I think I go more to like stuffing Kongs and then, you know, getting the chewing, the games and sort of stuff sort of back into the routine. I think, too, like when you go from you think of like dogs in summer and they're out running loose at camp and they're going on lots of hikes and they're doing all these things off leash and they're sniffing and they're getting all of these needs met. And then you come home and it's like, okay, nine to five, then I got to take the kids to soccer. And then, you know, basically the dog gets ignored all day. So then you start to see some problem behaviors. Right. Um, So one of the things that I try to recommend for people to do 
is to still meet those needs in other ways. So adding different enrichment activities, not just a Kong, but like going for a sniff walk yep. and letting the dog just sort of take everything in because you're going from, you know, maybe being off leash all the time to now we're going to just walk around the block in a, <laughs> you know, yeah. in a little heel and march with our leash. Um, you want to make sure that they're still having lots of opportunities to meet those needs so that they're not having problems popping up at home. Right. And I think it's about multitasking. Right. Right. And then um, creating a plan, um, functioning as getting everybody in the family on board mm -hmm. or, you know, whoever's in, in the household um, at that period of time. Um, still trying to keep up the socialization part. And, you know, when you even mention, you know, dropping kids off at different, the odd times, I bring the dogs for right. a car ride right because then you go around different types of people if i got five minutes while i'm waiting for the kids take the dogs out even walking around a parking lot yeah and just you know? letting them sort of smell all the new smells in a yeah. different place and taking all the new sights that they can see yeah so i think there's a transition and again you know i think about it is i say this about every season but in every season there's sort of landmarks and i would say that most of our I don't want to say world, but I would say for me, but I think um, in general for people, whether you have kids or not, like focus on, you know, that September to June is school, mm -hmm. right? And then we, we have that summer off. But I think for a lot of people, and I say that's actually our, one of our busiest times. Yeah, well, is because in, a lot of people are getting puppies, right? In September, yeah. But the other thing too, in, in being back to school, is you know everybody wants to get back to classes or yeah. they you know we're arranging all our activities kids activities and so now we're arranging the dog activities which right? is good because you still want to carve out that time to spend with the dog right you still yeah. want to have that one-on-one -on -one with them you don't want to go from like they're included in everything to like to, yeah you can stay at home all night so doing a class even with some of the older dogs right is still a good way to not only maybe get back some of the training that they maybe lost while they were <laughs> yeah. frolicking all summer and yeah. and also to spend time with them and build that relationship and keep it going throughout the year. Yeah, and I think it um, helps everybody adapt. But what I find a lot of people in the feedback that we get is, you know, if you're in classes and coming every week and you have the homework, you're a little bit more um, willing or able to do the homework and, and spend the time to do it. So you're more accountable, I yeah. guess is what I'm saying. I'm one of those people for sure. Yeah. I need, I need homework or I'm not going to do it. You need homework, you're not going to do it. So um, yeah, so it's just being accountable. Um, and I don't necessarily say deadlines and stuff, but it gets everybody sort of in the groove you, you know. can also have goals to work toward, yeah. right? So yeah. if you're saying, okay, this year, you know, maybe all summer I was really frustrated with my dog because their recall wasn't great. This year we're going to put in some time. We're going to work on our recall, right. right? And then you maybe take walking and recall class and you work on that. And then, you know, you, you start to take those skills and you work them. Now you have a goal to work toward. So you're more likely to actually spend some time with the dog to do it. Right. Um, as well, I think the other thing that comes up a lot is alone time. Because yeah, I know yeah. you talked about it a little bit, like getting them used to it. But if you had, let's say, you know, your puppy before the summer and then you spend all summer and they're doing everything with you, you can't just go and toss them in a crate for eight hours on, you know, September yeah. 1st and then hope for the best. Yeah. Um, why don't you talk about some of the ways that we can help dogs to be more comfortable when they are doing those, you know, those periods of time where you're starting to adjust to being alone. Right. And it's about um, revisiting, you know, creating a titch of a plan, which we're really trying to encourage people to do. And we have mentioned it quite a few times in different podcasts is um, instead of, you know, flying by the seat of your pants, mm -hmm. sort of create a plan in that, um, you know, with your schedule, are you able to come home at lunch? Is yeah. the dog being left for eight hours a day? Um, has the dog been in the crate at all, all summer? Yeah. Um, are you going to be leaving the dog out and in what area? And then, like I said, how long a time? You know, some people do have friends, family that will come in and let the dog out halfway through the day. Mm -hmm. um, that sort of thing. Some people are still working at home. So how is it going to work 
for your dog and how are they going to do? It's always great to do like a test drive right. before, you know, like you said, that September 1st comes around. So even practicing, leaving them for an hour or two, there's some good products that are out on the market. Um, Cause I know everybody gets concerned about, you know, different medications and the dogs, but you know, there's different foods that um, help dogs calm, um, different treats. My sort of go-tos, um, as well as yours are, actually, we have the same go-tos, is, you know, different types of um, pheromone. Yeah, Colors. I'm a big fan of, of the Dap yeah. Diffuser. Yeah, Diffuser. Um, I've been actually recommending collars more, especially if the dog has issues. So just to break that down, if you're not sure what we're talking about, when we say the word pheromones, actually, a lot of people ask questions. The brand is actually Adaptal. Um, it's the smell of a lactating female and it is calming to your dog. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's quite simple to just give them that little bit of extra support where just taking off that little edge of anxiety and like the diffuser, like you said, I describe it as like a glad plug-in. Right. That but we don't smell it. No, we don't smell it. Every, yeah. I, I joke a little bit because people are worried that we're going to, you know, medicate them a little bit, but we're not. Um, the thing is um, the, uh, the dogs pick up on, pick up on the smell. Right. Um, and it's uh, calming. Yeah. Right. So it helps to take the edge off and get them a little bit used to things. I find a lot of people now are, are using them for for different issues. And if overall you can make your dog a little bit more comfortable, then why not? Right. right. So and I think another of my go to's when they're alone is to play music. Um, I know there's like the through a dog's ear, like the specific yeah. uh, classical music for dogs. That's... I usually say classical. I'm more like something of course they don't say hard rock and roll because the yeah. booming that sort of thing but a lot of people leave the radio on and i think music is better because they say sometimes with the radio there's a lot of different people talking and sometimes your dog may be concerned about where these voices are coming from yeah yeah so it's the classical like leave the classical channel on and then like amelia said there's actually different production companies that have put out this music especially for dogs and have studied there's a spotify playlist <laughs> there's, um, there's spotify everybody there's a spotify playlist but i i mean i leave the radio on and i when i lived in the city i found that was helpful because of the different noises because then they're not barking when there's something different um yeah. because a lot of the time it would be like there'd be a loud truck going by yeah. or there'd be a dark dog barking outside or there would be you know any any weird sound, um, whereas now where it's a little bit more quiet, yeah, it's maybe a bit more concerning for them when the the voice is changing or the style of the music is changing. But yeah, overall, just I feel like something in the background is good to sort of help them feel a little yeah, bit more Yeah, like almost to help the quiet or the extra quiet, but again, different noises in different locations, right? I don't think people realize how sensitive dogs are to... Um, to noises and mm -hmm. ones that haven't occurred on a regular basis because in doing more like separation anxiety and so forth, it's actually broken down to say the dog was originally spooked by a sound that happened in the yeah. house. So, and a lot of times we can't figure out what the sound may have been. So it's not necessarily the fact that they're worried about being alone. It's the fact that they experienced this emotion or sound when nobody else was around. So yeah, then it's added stress. Kind of scared them. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing that I do is I always leave a frozen Kong because yeah. it gives them something to do. Um, yep. And I think it's just, it's part of the routine of leaving too now. Like they just know when the radio I think goes it's on. a good part because then when you get ready, they're looking forward to the fact that they get the stuffed Kong and not the fact that, you know, then they're not stressed out that you're leaving. Oh yeah. Right? Stark definitely runs to his little bed. And waiting for waits. his Kong. Yeah. Um, even though he doesn't love it when I leave, he sure loves the part where he gets the Kong. So, yeah. Um, definitely there's there's some information out there about like anxiety and if they won't eat if there's a Kong and whatever, yeah. but we don't need to necessarily get into that. Um, we're just talking in general, yeah. right? Helping the dog feel comfortable when they're at home. Yep. Um, the other important piece is after you are home, so the dog's not alone anymore. Right. Uh, the enrichment stuff. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Um, again, it's it's about 
um, being able to multitask. Right. I guess is is what I want to say. Um, you know, like we still, and then like you said, the schedules change. So now we need to cook dinner. Everybody needs to eat. Um, then after that, is it is it you know everybody's calming down for the evening, We're going to repeat again the next day, or are we driving out to different activities? So you know, in having that little bit of plan where if the dog's not getting walked so much that day, what we can we do instead? Well, we could feed in a Kong wobbler while we're cooking in the kitchen. We can do leave it's off of broccoli and carrots, mm-hmm. uh, train mat. Yeah. Like I usually tell people my time to train mat is when I'm in the kitchen, especially making a salad or veggies, then I'm just, you know, throwing broccoli and the sort of thing is, they're willing to play the game with me. And sometimes the game lasts 15 or 20 minutes, but that's 15 or 20 minutes of stimulation, right? Yeah, instead of them just sitting there, because if you think about it, like they are they get up, they go out for their pee, whatever, and then they just wait all day for us to come home. But then when we come home, we're <laughs> exhausted. Preoccupied, yeah. And we're doing other things. And so we're like, why can't you just chill out? But all they've been doing all day is chilling out. Just chilling out, out yeah. hopefully. Um, yeah. So then, you know, they need those activities in the evening. So um, I know in Kelsey's enrichment webinar that um, she holds, we talk about things that are not just food enrichment. Like there's also like giving them different things to smell and giving them different things to taste and giving them areas to, you know, dig or chase or, you know, outlets for the different things that are natural. Hide and seek. Yeah. 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 Um, So that it's not just constantly about sitting there and, feeding the dog um, because yeah. maybe that's not enrichment for them, right? Maybe yeah. they're like, okay, let's go do something else. Um, sniff walks are a big one. If you only have 15, 20 minutes to walk your dog, I think it's much better that they spend that time sniffing. Is it sniffing or is it you need to run them hard and say play fetch in the backyard? You yeah. know what I mean? So like different different alternatives, different needs for different walks. It's funny you should say about the sniffing thing is I had sushi the other day. Mm. And, you know, they give you that little bit of ginger, that candy ginger, whatever. I let each of the dogs smell it because I was like, okay, are they going to actually? And, like, two of them ate it. And I was oh. like, like, just a tiny little piece. Oh, and I, I like, was like ginger. Neither do I. Uh, three out of the five were like, mm, no, thank you. I was, like, quite interested in that. So mm. I've been on a bit of a since my seniors class yeah. in doing that. And just promoting, trying to keep different senses, you know, active and and getting them using them. I now, anytime I have something in my hand that smells a little bit different, I let the dog smell it. Like I had Mm -hmm. them smelling banana. Well, that's sort of normal. They're not too fond of banana. I'm trying to think of what else I had the other day. Of course, making sure um, I let them smell sort of the chicken through the package, but obviously making sure that they're not going to eat it. Yeah. (laughs) Right. But it's just about smells. Yeah, smelling the barbecue sauce was another thing, just sort of things like that. Sorry about that aside. But um, again, in just focusing on, like you said, it's it's not all about food and delivering food and training. It's about sort of other ways. Some people try to make up on it on weekends. That's another option, plan and activity. The weekend warriors. The weekend warriors, yeah. Plan and activity or something on the weekend. But, you know, we're just basically saying just a little bit of note to self, do the best you can, might be a great opportunity to, um, you know, look at asking people, you know, to have play times or something, setting up play dates when you're not having as much time to go for a two hour hike, yeah. you know, enlisting others, because a lot of people are in, you know, the same boat as yeah. most of us. Because so. there's definitely people who will, you know, get up at five o'clock and take their dog for a two hour hike before they get ready for work. Um, I'm not those people. No. <laughs> uh, no. I am very much like I'd rather be going out at midnight and playing scent games in the yard or something. Um, but there, there's different activities that work for different people and different dogs. So keeping in mind that enrichment isn't just giving them a Kong and hoping for the best. It's, right. It's actually doing things with your dog and, and still keeping their senses sharp. Yeah. Um, So other than like sort of doing these things with them after school, when you're thinking back to school season, Mm -hmm. what are some of the other struggles that you see people dealing with as far as dogs? As far as dogs, I would, again, just go to the main the main part of exercise and um, possibly like alone time. Okay. 
Yeah, I would, I would honestly say most of the struggles, I think, in working, and honestly, I haven't really worked an eight to five job in a while. Yeah. Right? So, you know, when I used to, it'd be rush, rush, rush in the morning. But honestly, I try to tell people an extra five, 10 minutes of play attention in the morning is huge. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, lunchtime, um, you know, do something special. Like again, even all it takes is the five or 10 minutes because I'd find a lot of times I'd rush home for lunch and then, you know, I'm trying to do this and that and load the dishwasher and whatever, where ideally I should just, I just started coming home, leaving that till later, take the dogs in the backyard, get myself some fresh air, sit down for 10 minutes, hang out. And then I went and it was much more um, relaxing that way. But I think it it is such a task because with the two of us now with the business is, you know, not to say it's easier or harder, but our yeah. days are very different. Mm -hmm. And I don't think any of our two days are the same. <laughs> so that's true. Um, you know, and in, in those people that, you know, work from home, have their own business, shift workers, our lifestyle is a little different and not to say it's better or not better, but we have our own challenges, mm -hmm. right? Where a lot of times for me, I need to get the dogs walked and exercised during the day if I'm teaching classes at night, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. So um, I actually plan, I plan out my day. I, I usually plan out my day. And if I'm super busy, well, then that might be one day I walk up and down the driveway and do search cues in the snow or mm -hmm. um, in the grass, obviously. And um you know, that may just be a shorter day, but the next day I have a little bit more time and I head to your place and we do a 45 minute walk, right? Like right. in the long run, it does somewhat balance out. I think people get too focused on, you know, one day the dog didn't get a walk, but if you round it all together, yeah, you know, it's, it's relatively okay. And I think, you know, again, you have to look at your multi-dog household. Yes, dogs exercise one another which is helpful, mm -hmm. but it's also important to have that dog human interaction. Um, but honestly, why don't you give start a bit of a summary um, in the back to school? And w this is one where I would say a lot of it is our own personal, I don't wanna say personal situations or experiences that we've had um, through clients, but I think we honestly experience it all differently. But I think- I think that's the same for everybody. Yeah. Like we have clients who work the nine to five, we have clients who work shift work. Like some people relate with our experience, you know, with back to school where you have kids and I don't, yeah. right? You have a teacher in the family, I do not. So my, my back to school is you know, pretty irrelevant in my yeah, household. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, or is it's kind of a big deal in your household? So I think that's going to be different for everybody. But regardless, um, the season's still changing. Yeah. And the, you know, the days are getting shorter. And yeah. All that stuff. So everybody's yeah. routine is going to change a little bit. I think to summarize it, I would say you're going to make sure that they have their routine. Yeah. You're going to make sure that you practice beforehand. Yeah. Right. Making sure that you're starting to do, you know, not every day going for a 5K, start exercising a little bit less or start giving them a little bit more alone time or yeah. starting to sort sort of slowly ease them in that way. And then also coming up with enrichment activities, possibly planning them in advance and saying, you know, I'm going to spend five, 10 minutes doing this with my dog. Or if I have 20 minutes for a walk, we're going to do this on that walk. And just um, sort of trying to make it a little bit easier for everybody by being prepared. Yeah, for sure. So um, we'll wrap it up for this week. Yeah. And the other thing is, you know, if you have friends and family, um, ask for help. Get them engaged. Yeah. Especially, you know, if you have kids and that sort of thing, everybody can pitch in. And it's good for the dogs to be spending time with different people mm -hmm. as well. So, yeah. Thank you very much, everybody. So we hope we eased a little bit of um, heading back into routine and back to school. Uh, definitely here for any questions or comments. Spotify. I knew that was coming. Um, I wanted to say it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. You can find us on social media on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. And Spotify. And Apple Podcasts and anywhere else that you listen to podcasts. And Did YouTube. you say YouTube? I didn't say YouTube. See? You there. YouTube. Now I got two. I got Spotify and I got YouTube. Okay. And I got Instagram. Let's go back and forth. Facebook. Instagram. Spotify. Facebook. YouTube.
TikTok, Spotify, website, Spotify. <laughs> okay. We did it. Teamwork. Questions from the audience. <laughs>